What kind of government best preserves the rights of the governed? This question was at the core of debates at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia in the summer of 1787. Our founding fathers feared one thing above all others, tyranny or the concentration of power. In Federalist 51, James Madison explores the challenges of setting up a structure of government to prevent tyranny. In framing a government which is to be administered by men over men, the great difficulty lies in this. You must first enable the government to control the governed, and in the next place, oblige it to control itself. Our founding fathers created a democratic republic, giving ordinary citizens a say in who is in power. They preserved much of the power of the state governments that existed in the early republic, but they also gave the federal government a larger role than in the Articles of Confederation. To safeguard freedom, they divided the powers of government among distinct bodies. At the federal level, the government has three branches, legislative, executive, and judicial different parts of government that each had enough power to counteract other parts, creating checks and balances. The founders took insight of checks and balances from the French political philosopher Montesquieu. For Montesquieu, each distinct branch of government restrains the others, preventing despotism. No one part can easily gain excessive power. In the words of Madison, the accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary in the same hands, whether of one, a few, or many, may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny. Our founding fathers believed that dividing power was vital to preserve liberty, protect rights, and ultimately to prevent tyranny. Checks and balances are enshrined in the Constitution. Of course, the greatest check to tyranny is being answerable to the people directly. Congress was envisioned as the most in tune to everyday Americans, accountable to the states and to individual voters from their districts. That's why the framers of the Constitution gave the most responsibilities to the legislative branch. That's why they started with Article I, the structure and powers of Congress. What powers does the Constitution give to Congress? Has the scope of those powers changed? How successful was the Founders Project? 